traders, the topic of uh, what I'm going to talk about right now is, is market direction. Now take a look at the, here's my results. And as you can see here, I've got, uh, I'm just barely in green, $700. I had uh, three losing trades, one of them very small and a very nice second trade in TXN. So really three winners, three losers, but a little bit more green than red. The, the trade that moved me to green territory is uh, Microsoft. Now, I do want to talk about market direction and let's first take a look at the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq was clearly uptrending today. I can't say the same about the S&P 500 because if you take a look at the S&P, we started by moving up, then back to the highs, then down under the lows, and then finally over the highs. It's quite rare. Normally, the S&P dictates the direction of the market. Sometimes the Nasdaq dictates the direction of the market. Sometimes the S&P is the one that follows the Nasdaq. Well, Nasdaq is more volatile, more technology companies. So you could expect that to happen every once in a while. Um, so you kind of get a pre-warning or uh, it could be your crystal ball, as we call it here, uh, for what's going to happen to the S&P 500. So if you're trading a stock that is more, let's say, Nasdaq oriented, like uh, Microsoft for four letters symbol which means Nasdaq if you're trading a Nasdaq stock like Microsoft you should be watching the S&P that's the main thing you should be watching but also the Nasdaq now if the Nasdaq is holding to the highs and later the Nasdaq is taking off look at what happened to Microsoft Microsoft moved over the highs after the Nasdaq was moving higher always remember this when you're trading a stock always look at the main indices. Always look at the S&P 500, always look at, uh, at the Nasdaq. They are both extremely important. The reason for that, institutional traders are only allowed to buy when the S&P is moving higher. When the Nasdaq is moving higher and the S&P is following, institutional traders are starting to buy. And that means you're gonna get some backwind. So if you're planning to go long or if you're planning to go short and the S&P is moving higher or the Nasdaq is moving higher and then gives you kind of a warning that the S&P may be moving higher, that's kind of a bet, you know, and I did that. I, was men I mentioned it in the room. Once I moved in long Microsoft over 285, it was holding to the highs. It had a pullback. I bought the pullback. At that point, if you can see what happened to the Nasdaq, that was the point of the pullback in the Nasdaq. And then the Nasdaq really kind of went sideways. That's the same time where Microsoft was going, going sideways. And then when the Nasdaq finally decided to move higher, look at this point over here, 1025. That's the candle that moved over the highs. Now take a look at, uh, at, um, at what happened in Microsoft at 1025. You can see that it started moving higher, didn't yet move over the highs. And if you remember, I mean, we were trading this in live, uh, uh, the 1025, that's a five minute candle here. The 1025, since it's a five minute candle, it's a little bit hard to see. But when we were trading it, we saw the Nasdaq making the first move. And then immediately, I mean, 10, 20 seconds later, Microsoft was moving higher. So really, when you're trading, if you're not watching the main indices, you're missing out on the fact that they give you kind of a pre-warning to what is about to happen to the stock that you're trading. So if you long Microsoft and you see the Nasdaq moving higher, and I felt like Microsoft was moving sideways for too long, I felt like, well, I don't know if I want to stay there. I, maybe I want to move out because it's just going sideways. And then finally, Nasdaq decided to move higher. And then quite soon afterwards, you could see that uh, Microsoft responded. Now, who are these buyers? Mainly institutional traders. Why? Because institutional traders are 80% of the volumes of the stock that we're trading. 80% of the volume. So how do we, uh, I mean, are the 20% left is us? No, not really. Because in the 20% that are left, there's more like long-term investors than us. We're just a small fraction of the 20%. I mean, sometimes when we're coming in, uh, lots of traders at breakout points and so on. Yes, we do influence the stock quite a lot, but normally, we don't do that much. So institutional traders are the ones that are moving the stock. They started buying when the S&P was moving higher since the Nasdaq was moving higher. And then you could have some kind of an idea of what Microsoft's going to do. Well, uh, I did trade with a trend and that's why I have a winner in Microsoft. So that moved me to green territory and I'm happy to be green because green is good. America.
quick for you, Mary. Yeah. So, okay, I get it. Um, I get that the trend is your friend. I get that I want to look at the SPY. And when I'm trading a NASDAQ stock, I want to look at the triple Qs. So I get that. And if I'm a new trader, I want to watch where the market's going and I want to have the stock go with the market. But what about stocks that, that work independently from the market? How could you tell that new trader, okay, Mayor, I'm looking at the triple Qs. They're at the high of the day. But the stock that I'm trading, I'm trading a short and it's going against the trend. Is there anything in your mind or is there any anything that you use to say, hey, I want to stay away from those stocks or am I attracted to those stocks because they're counter trend? Is there anything in your mind that kind of shifts your thinking from, you know, not paying, not, not that you're not paying attention to the market, but when you see a stock that's counter trending, does that give you a better trade, a worse trade? What, what's your thought on that? Okay, good point. Um... Well, I, I would say the following. 60% um, of, um, of the movement in the stock that you're trading is based on market direction. 60%. 30% is based on the uh, sector of the stock. Like if you're trading Chinese stocks, um, again, depending on the sector, but normally Chinese would move together if you're trading airlines, if you're trading whatever. So 30% would be the direction of uh, the sector and 10% of the time stocks will have life of their own. So if you're looking at uh, TXN, TXN is on my charts right now. You can see it here. I was trading short TXN today. These are T this is TXN in 5-minute candles. S&P was moving higher. TXN was moving lower. Now, why is that? TXN is down 5%. It's under a lot of pressure today. And there's different rules as to stocks that are down more than 3% or so. It doesn't have the same number of institutional traders. It's all based on institutional traders. So... If, if you're looking at some stocks, they will have life of their own. But even TXN, once the market is moving to new highs or spiking higher, even if it's downtrending, it's going to move up a bit because the market just moved higher. So it's not a 100% tool. If, if you mistakenly thought what I mentioned earlier is a, is a, is a clear-cut 100% tool, no. <laughs> if we had rules like that, we would all live downtown Manhattan and drive Rolls Royce, right? That's not the case. It's not a 100% rule. It changes. So 60% of the time, the stock will move with the market. But what about the 40%? Just like you said, Scott, sometimes we will take a short. But um, if the market's moving higher, probably you want to take the short with less size. You don't want to risk that much. If the market is uh, going sideways, well, you could still take the short or the long if you like the stock that you're trading. If the market, let's say you want to take a, a, a stock like Microsoft long and the market is clear, move, clearly moving higher, maybe instead of taking 400 shares, now you should take 600 shares because you got the market in your back. So it's, it's not about saying, no, I will not short this stock. It's about saying, well, my chance to succeed at that point is, well, you know, just a little bit less or maybe much less. And it depends on whether the stock has a life of its own today. Like if Microsoft, let's say take TXN, okay? If TXN, uh, which I shorted today, and it's my best, my best winner, if TXN would have been down instead of 5%, uh, 6, 7, 8, 10%, I would have appreciate this trade a little bit more and maybe trade a little bit more size because TXN was very likely to have a life of its own today. It still had it, okay? But it could have had a bigger move if it was down 10% instead of 5%. Uh, and, and of course, it depends on which stock you're trading, which sector you're trading. What is the direction of the S&P 500? What is the direction of the NASDAQ? And, and try to figure out where, where they're going. What, what's the next move? Now, take a look at Microsoft here. See, right now, take a look at Microsoft. Look at the NASDAQ. Look, the NASDAQ moved higher. Look at when the NASDAQ stopped. You see, I'm going to point out this candle over here. That's 1040. Now, take a look at Microsoft. 10.35, the high was 10.40. Why did Microsoft decide to stop? You know, that's the new high. Why did Microsoft decide to stop? Why did Microsoft has a new high 
at 1040, exactly at 1040. Now take a look at uh, the S&P 500 here to my left. You can see that the high is 1040. Did, did just Microsoft decide, okay, I had enough, 1040, I'm going to stop moving higher. <laughs> Why? Why did that happen? Why did Microsoft stop at exactly at 1040? Because the Nasdaq stopped and the, the S&P stopped. And because of that, the institutional traders stopped. So if you're looking at the relationship between the stock and look, we've got several red candles afterwards, S&P and Nasdaq and Microsoft. Now take a look at the Nasdaq and try and figure out when Microsoft is going to make the next move. Now I'm not saying you should always follow the S&P, click long, short, long, short Microsoft. But if you have like a reversal formation in Microsoft, so you start with a reversal formation, you start with a technical formation. If you have a technical formation or a reversal or a breakout or something like that, you can think about going long Microsoft because then you have an edge. You know, you, if you have a technical formation and you look at Microsoft and it's uptrending and now you have a technical formation, just like we did, we moved exactly here, 285, very nice reversal here, look at this doji and we bought. Now, if you have a technical formation in a stock that is moving higher and you're going long, what is your chance to succeed? 60%? It's more than 50, right? It's more than 50. The stock is uptrending. The, the trend is your best friend. It's more than 50%. But, so let's say you got 60%. Now at the same time, look here, you've got the Nasdaq reversing as well and moving higher. And the Nasdaq will always make the first move. And of course, watch the S&P. And then if you've got them both together now, it's no longer 60%. Now it's maybe 65 or maybe 70%. So you see, you just add up things. You just, you, you look at the stock, Microsoft is strong today. Great. How's the daily of Microsoft look? Does it get any points for the daily? Let's take a look at the daily. I mean, isn't that amazing? Look at the daily of Microsoft. It's a breakout formation. Microsoft is in the breakout. Of course I saw that before I took the trade. So I was watching Microsoft, beautiful daily formation. I liked it. Look at my pre-market picks. I posted it in the trading room. It was my pre-market picks. I just had, I believe, two stocks which I posted for the long side um, today. Let's see. Yes, it's right over here. You can see it. Long, three stocks for the long. Uh, one of them is Microsoft. So I'm watching these stocks and I'm trying to figure out whether, whether Microsoft is going to make the move. And then, I'm, of course, I was watching the pre-market uh, breakout formation and I was more watching it following it throughout the day and now I've got let's move back to five minute candles it's more clear and then I'm, I'm seeing Microsoft really moving higher as I expected nice technical formation to go long what's the S&P is doing what's the Nasdaq doing do we have a chance that the S&P and the Nasdaq will give us a backwind which means the institutional traders which are 80% of the volume will start buying click the button and if it, I mean, everything connects together. And if you, again, thought, well, maybe I'll, I love this trade. I'll take 400 shares. Fine. You decide to take 400 shares, 200 shares. It doesn't matter. You decided you're going to buy 400 shares in Microsoft. 100 shares. It doesn't matter. Now, you've got the market on your back. You've got some back wind. You've got something helping you. And, well, the daily looks so great. How about instead of buying 400, buying 500 or maybe 600? So sometimes traders... When everything connects in together, change your quantity just, just a bit, not much. Just change your quantity. If the market was going sideways, how about if you thought about buying 400 shares, how about reducing it to 200 shares because you don't have the market clearly on your side? Well, you'll click the button. Maybe the market will help you. It's not going down. Okay, it's just going sideways. What about the market coming down? So now the market's coming down and you thought you're going to buy 200 shares of Microsoft. Well, you still have this trade. You don't want to miss out on this trade. Maybe you shouldn't trade it or maybe you should reduce your size to 200. You get what I'm saying? That's it. That was a free lesson. Next one's going to cost you. Bye, traders. Have a great day. <laughs> I was... You take care, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very good answer. See you tomorrow. Very good, my friend. Enjoy your evening. Yeah, and, and, and that yep. free and Take that free lesson cost you a thumb up if you didn't give us in 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 Nasdaq in in, sorry, in, Nasdaq, in in YouTube. So give us a thumb up now. Let's let's go over. We, we, what what is our target number now, Scott? Well, let's see where we're at now. Thumbs up. Uh, we're at one twenty four. Let's go two hundred. One twenty four. No, we need five hundred. Five hundred, and you get another lesson like this tomorrow. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. So just I click the button. There's, Let's go YouTube. There's a thousand of you there. Smash that like right? button for us here. Okay. Thank you.
Ja. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.